Grandma's got four poems to share with you guys today. It's Easter, and some of the poems I'm going to share are uh, kind of from the Bible, and are about the Bible. Uh, this is by poet Calvin Miller, and from his books, Apples, Snakes, and Belly Aches. And there are some illustrations in this book, and they're by Mark Harrison. This first poem I'm going to read, though, is not about Jesus, but about a famous scientist. It has to do with apples, so I think that's why he included it. It's about Sir Isaac Newton, who discovered and coined the term gravity. Gravity's always been there since God created the world. It's why we don't flow off into the wor- into outer space. But this is his poem about Isaac Newton. And there's Isaac holding the apple with the big bump on his head. And it bubbles up there with the light bulb. The light bulb is a cartoon way of showing we have an idea. Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton sure was smart beneath the apple tree. When one fell off and hit his head, he said, Wow, gravity! For Newton was a genius and not a common slouch. A genius cries out, Gravity! Most others of us just say, Ouch! The next poem I'm going to read is called The One Minute Old Testament. And I'm pretty sure both Aunt Heidi and Aunt Holly had this memorized. I don't know that I'm really going to read it in just one minute because if I read it that quickly, I'm not sure I will say all the words very clearly. And in this, there's a picture of the snake and Adam and Eve packing their suitcases, leaving the Garden of Eden. The One Minute Old Testament. In the beginning, it was night till God said, Pow! Let there be light. Then he made Adam and his wife, who ate the fruit and went kaput, and very promptly got the boot. Once out of Eden, they raised Cain. The kid was rotten in the main. He murdered Abel, ran away, and married, who we cannot say, some girl who lived out east of Eden, which is nowhere near to Sweden. Then Adam said, Eve, Abel's dead. We can't find Cain. I think it's time to try again. They tried again, and in the main begot a very hardy strain, till Noah came and brought the rain, and sinful people were ashamed to find themselves washed down the drain. Then God called Adam out of Ur and said, You'll be a father, sir, said Abe of Ur. God, I'm not sure. Here comes my Sarah. Look at her. This thing could really cause a stir. She's older than old Pharaoh's sister and never been a good begetter. But they begat, and Isaac came, and he began somewhat the same, a set of twins, and Jacob, who was one of them, begat a dozen. Jewish man, Jacob's Joseph, quite a man, left the ancient Holy Land, and down to Egypt brought the clan, where they camped out beside the Nile, and then endured a life of trial. In Egypt they begat a mighty nation with a little concentration. When they'd been down in Egypt for 400 years, or somewhat more, Moses said, That's long enough. Come now with me. I'll split the sea. And everybody said, Golly! From a mountain, Moses looked over, died, and Joshua took over. And when Josh split the Jordan River, Caleb up and grabbed his liver, shouted out, Well, did you ever! For the next 400 years, the judges ruled, while thousands cheered, and Japheth called, Arise and fight, you Israelites! We'll show our might to Canaanite and Jebusites and Perizzites. We'll put to fight the Hittites and the Gittites and the Moabites and the Ammonites and not termites or parasites. So Gideon led the Gideonites to war against the Midianites and Samson led the Samsonites, whose luggage was so very nice. Then came Samuel, Saul, and David, who killed a giant Philistine and later on became the king. Then Solomon and other kings, each one begat another king. The major prophets came along to tell the kings when they were wrong, and their rebukes were very strong. Isa spoke of days to come when all earth's people would be one. And then the king of Babylon watched war till Israel was all gone. But they returned, and Ezra came and rebuilt Israel again. Some minor prophets wrote a bit before God said, Well, this is it. My testament at last is done, and I must say it's sure been fun. The Malachi just happened by and wrote another final book. God took a look and said, oh, bye, we've done it well. Thanks, Malachi. Let's call it quit. The end. Goodbye. Then he also wrote the one minute New Testament. The one minute New Testament. 
Joseph the carpenter, early one morn, got married to Mary, and Jesus was born. Though God and not Joseph was really his father, Joseph loved Jesus, and so did his mother. Then Jesus grew up and was baptized by John, who wore camel's hair and ate bugs and honey. Yuck, he didn't care if his breath was so bad it polluted the air, because John sure loved God as anyone must if he says his grace proper before he sits down to a plate of grasshopper. Then Jesus went down to the shore of the sea and saw Jim and Johnny bar Zebedee. He said, follow me. And they did, as did others like Peter and Andrew, who were also brothers. Eight more soon followed, a dozen in all. Round, squat, and fat, fat ones, thin, skinny, and tall. Simon was dense, and Thomas, Thomas intense, and Judas Iscariot straddled the fence. For three years, Christ traveled around with his friends till Herod and Pilate said, This is the end. They hung our dear Lord on a cross in the sky, and he gave up his life. It made Mary cry. They thought he was dead, but their faces grew red when he got out of bed and walked from the tomb. And the lightning went pow with the thunder kaboom. But soon he ascended, that means to arise, and float up away beyond the blue skies. But down came the spirit that first Pentecost. His friends started preaching to act out his way. This new, spread like wildfire. He's home with his father, but there he won't stay. He'll come back someday. He's gone until then, but he's coming again. The news was so joyous, so splendid, so grand, Christianity spread all over the land. Saul tried to stop it, to spread out of the, to stop the spread of the church. But alas, he only got left in the lurch. I am going to kill Christians, put all of them down, and keep this religion from gaining much ground. He stirred up and blurted and killed one or two, but then was converted and became an apostle, just like the others. But the others all said, well, goodness me, brother, you, Paul, are a mugger, a real woolly bugger. You can't preach here, Paul, in our parks or a mall. For you, as you see, Paul, Jerusalem's home. Okay, shouted Paul, I'll go preach in Rome. He did and wrote letter to all Thessalonians, but not the Ionians. He wrote the Galatians, steer clear of temptations. He made a decision to write the Ephesians and Titus and Tim, who both pastored missions. He wrote the Corinthians and told them, don't fight. You're sinning too much. Behave and act right. Nero told Paul, your life now is minus. And Paul said, you got to be kidding, your highness. But kidding he wasn't. And so Paul was killed, but went on to heaven immensely fulfilled. And finally, then John wrote revelations and scared all his friends with tale of damnation. For 2000 years, it's been a sensation. And that's all the Bible there is now, my friend. Amen. Hallelujah. It's over. The end. And page. One more. That's not the page of it. Ah. This, call, this call, poem is called Eutychus. This is one story in the books of Acts of the Apostles. When Saul preached to Ephesus, a sleepy man named Eutychus thought he preached ridiculously long. As Eutychus was sitting in the window of the church, he rubbed his eyes and swayed and nodded and dozed and reeled and lurched. And feeling faint, he fell asleep and fell and fell for 40 feet. He flopped and he flipped and he floundered falling, falling, falling downward till he hit the fatal flagstones on the old Ephesian street. And Paul felt most embarrassed and his face was really red that his sermon had gone on so long and that Eutychus lay dead. He laid his hands on Eutychus and cried, Be resurrected, friend. Come back alive. I promise you I'll never preach so long again. And Eutychus began to breathe and opened up his eyes and said, Paul, how very nice you're here. Your sermon really knocked me dead. But Paul really beamed from ear to ear when Eutychus took a deep breath because no preacher wants to know he's preached a healthy man to death. Calvin Miller, apple snakes and belly aches. Happy Easter. He's risen.